Between school, your friends, and social media, answers are everywhere. But where can you find the truth? Welcome to the Well Student Cast. We're asking for a friend so you don't have to. What's up, party people? We back at the Well Student Cast asking questions for a friend so you don't have to. My name is Bryn, and I'm here with my friend. Ka-ayo, and it is a vibe because it's still summer. And <laughs> like Olaf, he loves warm summers. I think that's what he says in his movie. Doesn't he say he likes summers? I wonder what it'd be like in summer. And then he melts. Yeah, Yeah. sad. Just kidding. I don't know where I was going with that. I don't really know where you were either, but we're here. It's still great vibes because we're doing part two of our rapid fire Q&A. Yes, we had so many questions, which reminds me, Brandon, what is your favorite bagel to get from Uncle Harry's? (laughs) He is calling me out because in the middle of me (laughs) sharing all of the questions that got turned in, I like took a little sidebar and I was at Uncle Harry's little bagel shop and was like, what, what bagel do you want from Uncle Harry's? And he said, I'm fine. No, he said, I'm good. I I was like, "Mm, who denies a bagel? It's because I was at Cup of Joy like normal and getting a cinnamon (laughs) roll because they saved me one. Uncle Harry's is like my new favorite place ever. Okay. But like what bagel do you get? Uh, That's what the people want to know. Like a whole like nutrition kick. So (laughs) it's a whole wheat bagel with some cream cheese. And then I get their hazelnut brew of black coffee. Uh, you drank a black coffee? Um, I had some half and half. In oh, okay. It, of course. I was like, but it's dang. hazelnut brew. Yeah. I don't really understand how that works. So is it coffee beans or is it hazelnut cop? It's flavored coffee? It's like. Like pumped. Like, you know, when they're like this, this coffee has notes of hazelnut. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's it is. That's what it okay, is. Okay, nice. But it's like strong dang, notes. that's kind of bougie. <laughs> <laughs> And I love it. It's got those bold notes. Yeah, Yeah. it does. So if you love me, you will bring me a whole wheat bagel with cream cheese and a hazelnut coffee. Excellent. Well, Uncle Harry's. Yep. Well, uh, what's your favorite bagel? I think technically my favorite bagel. So I haven't been to Panera in probably a decade, but Panera used to have these like, like these cinnamon crunch. Oh my gosh. People post how to make those on TikTok. What? I deleted TikTok recently, actually. So I don't see them anymore, but I used to see them. But you know what I'm talking about? And it was like yeah. crunchy on side cinnamon. I've never had one. And then I would put hazelnut cream cheese ew. on it. And it was yummy. Did you say ew? It had strong notes of hazelnut. Yeah, brand. but like hazelnut cream <laughs> cheese. That's weird. Okay. Speaking of weird. <laughs> Speaking of weird, that reminds me of this one question. That's so mean. Well, you don't think your question's weird. I just am horrible at transitions. <laughs> Speaking of weird, I watched a... Uh, I got onto... I know you're not on TikTok anymore, but I got onto raccoon TikTok... Because someone that is weird. Because Indeed. someone from I feel like our our phones are just listening to us. And at a Wednesday night gathering, someone was talking about how they're they raccoon farm. They're a raccoon oh thing. Gosh, and then what happened was I literally scroll. T- I get to my car, I'm gonna go home, and I look just open TikTok real fast. See Michaela look, Doswell, this is a shout out to you and your <laughs> look, raccoon farm. Look, open the notifications, and immediately it is the first episode of For You page or first clip on For You page is a baby raccoon. And I said, Oh my gosh. They're listening. That's incredible. So anyways, that's, well, that's that. But speaking of... TikTok made a decision for you. <laughs> <laughs> and how is that decision yours, TikToks, or God's? But. Yeah, I'm not really sure. But they do say that God is sovereign. So maybe it was his hand in play as a joke. You know, he is a human. It could be. Being. But how and do you that know? that reminds me of this question that says, how would you go about discerning the decisions you're making if it's God leading you or yourself? So like, is it God's voice or your own voice saying like, this is God? <laughs> That's um, how I interpret that question. That's hilarious. And this is a multi-layered, multi-layered. Absolutely. Like, there's way too much to cover in that. But Absolutely. I would think if I had to sum it down to one thing. Yes. Is does your decision line up to God's word? That is a good way to put this. If it's not, then it's probably your flesh leading you, which is like your own self or your own selfish desires. Yeah. But there are times, and it's very important you hear me, there are times when your motives and the Lord's are actually the same. Mm. because because you are walking in step with God. Yeah. Which then therefore means that your heart is slowly being transformed to essentially be desiring the things of Lord, desiring the righteous things. Yeah. The more times you, just think about it, the more times you hang out with your friends, the more you tend to like the same things. You Uh, tend to do the same things. Talk like them, walk like them. Yeah, the whole thing. Be like them. I think that's a song somewhere. I think it is too. But it's the same thing walking with the Lord. The more time you spend with the Lord, the more you can trust the fact that your desires are probably most likely with the Lord. And if you're questioning that, maybe get an outside perspective. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. I think some of these questions come up even when it's like 
you're choosing your school classes for next mm. year or you're choosing your college or you're starting to think about what your major is or like whatever those questions are. Um, and I think with that, asking people around you who love the Lord more than they love you mm. to be like, Hey, this is where I'm leaning towards. Like, can you affirm that this is what you see in my life? Or like, can you affirm that this is like, you would say that this is a right step. Yeah. Um, Cause even just getting an outside perspective to be like, yeah, like this, this lines up with scripture. Um, obviously do that digging for yourself too. But I think sometimes we get so like in our own heads yeah. that we can't mm-hmm. even sort through that. So having someone else be like, okay, yeah, take the next step. And also like giving yourself grace or like reminding yourself that we don't have enough power to like off ramp God's plan for us <laughs> where it's like, like, I've heard this in the sense of like, if I, what if I'm choosing the wrong college that God mm. doesn't want me to go to? It's like, okay, but like God can use you whatever college you go to. So like what you're saying, if you're going to a college or choosing classes or choosing a sports team or yeah. whatever, like, is that a place where you can worship the Lord and like be a light for him in his kingdom? And if those are the like, yes is then, okay. Like take the next step. Yeah. Sometimes we complicate it a little. We do. I think we tend to overanalyze and then overprocess and then we get paralyzed. And so, but that does kind of get also, that also reminds me, I had a question from Bren that one of my friends kind of said. You're asking for a friend. I so am they asking don't have for friends so don't have to. They said, hey, is it a failure? If I, Am I a failure if I change my mind about going to college or change my major? Because the expectation they feel is that they have to go. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Is that the narrative you hear? Yeah. Because I, think I haven't finished school. I think that's so, so unfortunate. Yeah. I think that's so unfortunate. Yeah. Well, um, no, I don't think you're a failure. I, I don't think so either. Yeah. Like, I think that's something I've had to wrestle with, but I have not finished school and I'm taking a break and like, who knows if I'll go back. But mm-hmm. I think there does, there is in the world like a streamline of like, this is your next step. And I think it's a great next step. Like, mm-hmm. I think for a lot of people, it makes sense. And um, it's a huge accomplishment. But I think to have the pressure on yourself as a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior in high school to know exactly what that next step will be, yeah. what the major will be, what your job will be, all these things. Um, that's like too, too much. Yeah, um, that's a lot. And all in all, kind of same to the question that we were talking about with like, is it God's call to you or like your own voice? Um, like if whatever place you're in, if you can be a light for the Lord, be um, like working for his kingdom and um, yeah, like in line with scripture and what he has commanded us to be like, yeah. that is what <laughs> success is as a believer. Yes. Like it's not about the like money you make or yeah. the like prestigious school or like GPA that you get or all those things. Um, so yeah, that's my Ted talk. Oh, I appreciate that. No, I mean, that's literally what's like, they're talking about like, Hey, look like weapons of I'm going to school and my calling is not, the thing I'm doing, but I feel like pressure that I have to do this major. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah like let's just be beaten with the, to the Lord and the Lord will take care of you. That even reminds me, this is a really slight, quick side note. My parents were like, you need to be a doctor or a banker or something, like <laughs> just like high money. And I said, I'm going to go ahead and be an interpreter for Jesus. Yes. And my dad was like, no, <laughs> like you're on your own. And I remember being like, but I fully believe like this is what God was calling me yeah. to do. And so I was like, the Lord will provide at that yeah. point. And he did. And so I think there is like this thing where you have to battle the tension of how can I honor my family, but also be obedient to yeah. the Lord. Which, and you can out. be a doctor and be using the ways that God's gifted 10, you for his kingdom. 10,000%. Like, there's not like, you don't have to go into ministry for you to be like living out God's calling on your life. No, not at all. I just meant more like if your parents do not agree with what you're choosing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to clarify. That's good. That's so good. You can do science in the Lord. Is That is true. <laughs> all right, okay. Well, then that kind of leads me to another question is like while we're in college campuses or even in new spaces, like let's just say that I'm going to a new high school or I'm going to a new, uh, new like sports team. How do I interact with maybe people who maybe they say they believe in Christianity mm. or they are a sect of Christianity or just how do I believe with people who just don't believe the same thing I do? I think that's yeah. really the root of this question. Yeah. I mean, my push on this is like, how do you interact with anyone? Like, <laughs> how do you interact with other people who are Christian? Like, yeah. well, I don't think there should be a huge difference in how you interact with your community of believers and people who aren't believers. Like, yeah. be kind. Um, and yeah. 
and be respectful. Yeah, yeah, I think there's so many things that you can do. I think, yeah, the better question is why is this a question in the first place? Mm. Do you feel like you're trying to, is this a people pleasing like thing where it's like, I want to belong, but I don't know how that to mm. do, how to belong because I don't believe the same thing they do. And I would just, that's me pushing on you being like, what's your motivation for even being like, what's the question here? So, yeah. Yeah. Another one that we got turned in was how much do you enter in with a friend who's recently Christian uh, and aren't like are still not making the best choices? Oh. Um, so my interpretation of this yeah. is like friend isn't making great choices. They like have an experience or like um, interaction with the Lord. Uh -huh. They say that they give their life to the Lord mm -hmm. are now claiming the name of Christianity, mm -hmm. but their life still reflects like um, like old patterns. Of yeah. Life. Okay. Yeah. So mm. how do you enter in with them and like call them to a higher standard with also understanding like this is new? Yeah, that's actually a great question. I feel like that I almost like if you know the better way, please teach us. But I think the whole thing that you want to check in, right, is like if we're going to be disciples of, of other people and we're going to be pointing people to Jesus and we're just saying, hey, come follow me. I think that's really all we're asking is like recognizing that like, hey, yeah. look, like they're just taking their one next step. Yeah. And we should not be the judgment, the mm. judge people of like perfection of what it means to follow Jesus. Yeah. Because if I held up the mirror to you, <laughs> I'm not really sure you could say it's the same about you every single day. You yeah. Know, not use particularly Brynn, but no, like I'm talking but about yeah, the person. Yeah, all of us. It yeah. is me too. Like all of us, just because we became believers doesn't mean we're suddenly perfect. Yeah. And so the loving thing is to say like, hey, like, I know that this is new. Like, can we walk together through yeah. like what the Bible says about X, Y, Z? Or like, I don't know, even like leaning out in your own vulnerability, like, hey, I struggle with like this and like the Lord's still recovering me from this thing. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you struggle with too? Um, but yeah, I think the idea that like just because someone became a believer, yes, they are now called to a higher standard, um, but they're not going to like come to know the Lord and then all of a sudden be like, okay, I know how to do everything perfectly now. Yeah, I think if you it would, the... Uh you should love them enough to meet them there and love them enough to, to not, not let, let them, them stay, stay there. there. I was that's like, good. how do I say that? So <laughs> yeah. that's what, that's what our advice would be there, but we should probably do it in a good way. So Bryn, that reminds me of this other question that says like, how do we speak truth into people's lives without forcing or Jesus upon them? Like, how do we do that then? Yeah. Respectfully, kindly. Yeah. Sweetly. Yeah. Gently. For sure. Yes. I think the, um, my biggest thing would be that you let them know that you see them as a person first, like not as just their sin. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't think any conversation should just start with like, Hey, you're doing X, Y, Z wrong. Yeah. Or like, Hey, you know that the Bible says this and you're doing this. Like there's a way to enter in that conversation to even just start with like, Hey, like I love you. Like, mm -hmm. um, and I care so much about you and here's all of like the good I see the Lord doing in your life. Um, and then like almost with that speaking into like, Hey, but here's things like what, what's going on here? Yeah. Or like asking questions to understand instead of just like Casting coming judgment. at them. Yeah. Um, and if this person doesn't know the Lord, like we can't hold them to a standard that the Bible teaches if yeah. they have not given their life to the Lord. And so we show them the Lord through our own actions with them. And so if they see us being like rude to people or I don't know, living a double standard, yeah. then that's confusing. But if they see us like going out, being kind to people, serving, having authentic relationships, like living a life that's different than the world, then that might cause them to ask questions. And mm -hmm. even just the like, Hey, why do you, why do you do this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or even just how we handle the harder things too. Like how, like it, I think it is interesting for us to see like when we are very honest about, yeah, I'm still struggling with these things. I think that helps kind of break the stereotype of like, hypocrisy within the church, which is a big struggle for people uh, who are unbelievers. The other thing I would say too, is let's just say that you're talking to uh, people who do, who are believers. I would, I would recommend that you look at the story of Nathan and David. And Nathan was like, look, I'm not just gonna come at David with like, this is things you're doing. He was just like, Hey, like, can I walk you through and help you see what I'm seeing and get you to like the, like for you to come to terms of like, Oh my gosh, yes. If that was in the same situation, I'd be upset. And then Nathan's like, that was you, David. That was you. And that's just you restoring your friend with grace and truth. So that's good. Speaking of that, Bryn, this leads me to another question that I have on here um, because there are a lot. There are a lot. Probably our last one. Yes, probably our last one here. And so speaking of, wait, 
Yes. Okay. So speaking of all that, we had, sorry, the, the last question I have for us, Bryn, is what was just like one thing that you're hoping or that you're working on uh, as far as like your own relationship with the Lord for like, especially as we head into the summer, like what's something that you're going to prioritize this summer spending with Jesus? Yeah. Uh, my big thing right now is like Sabbath and that practice of it. Um, and so, yeah, making sure that's a priority, the like rest, you should check out our episode on rest. Um, but uh, yeah, just that intentional rest with the Lord and time with him um, and the reminder of like, I'm resting in his power, not my own. That's really good. I actually was inspired by Cooper Selzler. So I'm actually going to spend the summer by, uh, he's one of our seniors that's graduating. It's super sad. But uh, the I, uh, I was inspired to just start memorizing some scripture over the summer. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try and memorize at least one a week for the Whoa. whole summer. So hopefully, well, how long is the summer? Eight weeks? I don't know. I hope it's eight. <laughs> I don't know if I can do 12. We're going to do eight, <laughs> eight verses. That's what I do over the summer. So that kind of ends my, all of the questions I had on my list. This so. Q&A was fun. We're going to dive into some of these topics a lot more, I'm sure, in the future. But uh, we definitely want to do another Q&A at some point. So Absolutely. keep sending your questions. Um, yeah, if we yeah. missed one, let us know. Totally. Yeah, we did miss quite a few. So, so. like, subscribe, yeah. comment, rate us, and give us five stars because we like to be awesome. And uh, share with your friends because that's the that's the easiest form of evangelism. What? Oh, sure, 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 sure. sure. We'll All see right, you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>Thank you for listening to this episode of the Well Student Cast. As always, don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about us. For more information about the Well Student Ministries, visit thewellcommunities.org/students. 